All right, so I'm not going to do the entire prelap. Um, some of the part you can kind of do it uh, on your own. You, you know, it's an easy enough application of conservation of energy. I think what I want to do and illustrate is uh, the uh, your textbook calls it perfectly inelastic. I'm used to calling it completely inelastic. So completely inelastic collision. So this is what the question is describing here. You have some bullet that's coming in with the speed of V0. And what it's describing here is that once the bullet is embedded here, then both the bullet and the block, they now move together with some speed V final. And this is an interaction that does not conserve energy. In fact, you can show that there is no way this interaction can conserve energy. Now, having said that, it does conserve momentum. It conserves momentum for this very simple reason. The simple reason being there is no net external force. So um, I, from your reading, remember that momentum is defined as mass times velocity. That means in order to change momentum, there must be change of velocity or acceleration. So, well, acceleration that's involved with the force. Now, this is what I want you to realize. As this bullet is getting embedded, there is a force on the bullet. The force on the bullet is pushing it to the left. That's uh, what's slowing down the bullet. And this force is being exerted by the block. And if uh, I say this is my entire system, then the block is in the system. That means this is an internal force. I need to have Newton's third law pair. So there's a force on block that's equal in magnitude and opposite in direction from force on bullet. And those two opposing forces on different parts of the system um, cancel each other in terms of uh, affecting the momentum. That's why once I can identify that there is no net external force, like a force that could have come from friction, then um, momentum is conserved. So let me use this uh, momentum as a conserved quantity to answer this question of what is the final velocity of the combined thing. So I set up my uh, snapshot. So there's the snapshot before collision. So let me call that one. And there's this snapshot after the collision. Let me call that two. And my approach here basically is that the uh, total net momentum uh, from the initial to the end, or I guess I'm using label one and two now, uh, total net momentum from one to two is, it does not change, it's constant. So let me write that down. Uh, so total momentum, uh, and this is a one dimensional uh, problem. So let me say this is my plus dex and just deal with that. Total momentum, uh, in the state one uh, is equal to, so in state snapshot one, only the bullet is moving. So the total momentum is going to be mass of the bullet times V naught. Oh, I'm on the, hold on. <laughs> so that's going to be equal to the total momentum um, in the snapshot two. And in snapshot two, um, so it, something is moving at V final, and this is where you have to be careful. What is moving isn't just the block, it's the block plus bullet. So this mass here really is a small m plus the big M. So uh, the final momentum, small m plus the big M times the final velocity. So this is your one equation. And fortunately, 
I only have one unknown, the final velocity of the uh, combined blocks. So let's solve for that. Solving for that, you get the final velocity is equal to um, m over small m plus big m times v naught. That's it. That's the answer you would find through application of conservation of momentum. Now, I want to justify what I said that in this setup, it is not possible to conserve energy. So let's just check what is the energy in the state one and what is the energy in the state two. Let's calculate. Now, algebraically, I'm not going to plug in any actual numbers. <laughs> so kinetic energy in state one. So the bullet is the only thing moving, so I can calculate my kinetic energy based on that. That's one half mv initial squared. Let's do, write down our final kin or state two kinetic energy and see how that compares. So in state two, both the, um, the block and the bullet is moving. So the kinetic energy should be one half and the total mass, small m plus big m, times v final squared. All right, it's kind of hard to compare these two. How do they compare? Uh, fortunately, we have this formula for v final in terms of v naught. So I can plug it in and see where that lands me. So this is equal to one half uh, m plus m times v final squared. So that, um, um, so that ratio of the mass is squared so small m squared over uh, the total mass squared times v naught squared. Now there are some bits that look encouraging. Uh, one half is the same, good. And v naught squared here is the same. Now the rest looks a little complicated. Let me simplify. So this m plus n can be canceled out by one of these factors here. So where I have a single small m there, this is what I have, or writing it out in a bit of a more understandable format, uh, small m times this number that's not necessarily equal to one, which is the small m over small m plus big M. So this is what you are finding, going from kinetic energy one to kinetic energy two, all the terms are the same, except this M becomes this quantity here. And I hope staring at it without plugging in numbers, you realize that this is smaller than M because this ratio, or I guess that is ratio, is less than one. The denominator is always gonna be bigger than numerator. So, um, so yeah, uh, your kinetic energy went down. In fact, um, so this is an inelastic collision. This is a collision that didn't conserve energy. And in fact, the reason we call this completely inelastic is because this dissipates as much energy as possible. Um, so, so yeah, uh, this analysis, what it does is it, is it connects the initial launch velocity with this uh, speed of V final here that you might be able to connect to something else. So when you're doing this uh, in, the, uh, in the lab, the ballistic pendulum, what I hope you will um, uh, take heed of is that this particular collision step did not conserve energy. So you have to make sure that when you are analyzing this setup that you don't do what I did up there uh, when I did this question up here, I assumed the energy was conserved throughout the entire um, throughout the entire process because that's true. That's why I could skip this intermediate step. But on this question or a version of this in your lab, uh, you can't assume that the energy is conserved from beginning to the end. There's going to be an intermediate step where energy is not conserved, so you have to take it from the beginning to this step here, then use conservation of momentum to analyze this step, and then do the rest in using energy conservation. 